Welcome back to another episode of Torque. So today's really exciting day. Uh, I'll show you how to measure for wheel backspacing and we're gonna attempt to fire that engine up. So let's head out to the barn and get to work. We're gonna have a little bit of fun now. So now that we've got the fender on, um, I'll be able to do the backspacing on the wheels since these aren't the wheels that we're going to keep on this. So I've got the El Camino uh, on the lift. I'm about to uh, take off these wheels and tires and put them on the Chevelle. And I know the back set on these, which will give me an idea of what I need to order on these. We're still undecided on the, the wheels. I think we're going to go with Budnick again, but uh, we'll, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick how to measure for your, your tire and your, and your tire backspacing so you know what kind of rim or what size of rim. I always see that on the internet. People are asking what size rim will fit on my car. Well, every car is just a little bit different, especially the old cars. So it's best to measure it yourself. So the easiest way that I found is doing this. Tie a string or, or tape a string up to the upper part of your wheel well and make sure that it, it's barely touching your, uh, your rotor or your uh, drum brake and what you can do from that point is all you have to do from that is measure from the inside straight to your string and you know how much room you have in back so if you look at this you know you have about seven and a half inches that you could go on back spacing but you would also have to take off you know maybe an inch or so for clearance inside for the tire to the to the inside and then you just measure from the end, edge, edge of the string to the front and now you can see I've got six inches so overall I've got about 13 inches 13 and a half inches granted you have to give yourself a little bit of space here and in and back so that's the easiest way to do it and but make sure that your um, your rear end is actually loaded that you have uh, stands on the rear end uh, so that you know that correct right height so you have an exact measurement I'm doing it a little bit different um, I am actually pulling the uh, tires off of the El Camino and I'm going to put, put them on tires and rims. I know what the back spacing on those are and I'll be able to adjust perfectly for what I need. All right, I've got the uh, rims on from the El Camino. Um, there's a slight difference in the gap between the uh, quarter panel and the tire itself. So I took all these measurements. I believe this is the 11 16 the other side is closer to a half I can barely barely fit my finger up there which is pretty good and I'm going to show you what else I think uh, the always need to check and that's with with it articulated a little bit just to see your clearance I did measure on the inside and I have at least uh, one and a half inches on the inside and uh, I think it goes down to 1.3 when I articulate it and you'll see what I mean in just a second I jacked up this left hand side. This is just barely off the ground, so it can barely move, which means this is the, the furthest that it could possibly go off on the left side. And you can see my gap has widened here. And then check your inside gap. And I believe I went down to 1.3 inches on the inside, which means this is a nine inch rim right now. I can go one more inch inside now. That gap on the back was from the tire to the back of the uh, wheel well. But I can go one more inch wider going inside so I can go to a 10 inch rim, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, today's the day. We're gonna try and start the car. So I'm filling it up with uh, antifreeze. I still have uh, 10 gallons. I'm gonna put a premium in there. And, uh, and then we're gonna try and start it up. You guys are gonna see the first time, I'm gonna try and set up the computer and uh, we'll see if we can't get it set up right and then we'll start the car. All right, it's the moment of truth. So I've got the uh, remote in my pocket. This is set up on a proximity. As soon as I walk close to the front of the vehicle, everything should uh, unlock and it should energize the uh, start button. We'll see when we get close. There it goes. There's the start button. Now we have to uh, program 
the fuel injection itself, some basic programming. So we'll take this start button and it's just like turning on the ignition without starting it. We've got to press it twice. I don't know if that got it. There it goes. So now it, this is starting up the sniper EFI. So we are going to Wizards and we have to find the correct one 55 870. That's ours. Next, number cylinders eight, engine displacement. We are at 400 and 89 let's see if I can there we go 489 let's go next target idle speed I'm thinking somewhere around 850 let's go next and we'll go street strip next power adder we don't have any uh, nitric oxide so next hyper spark distributor next but we'll go wide open throttle ignition timing uh, uh 34 degrees and we are going to hit start and there it goes uploading i can hear the uh fuel pump so i'm going to turn this off I'm going to let that fuel pump run a little bit. We're going to check for leaks. Let's see if we can check real quick for leaks. Make sure we're not leaking anywhere. Fuel pump's humming away. We need to check for pressure. Is there something leaking? It looks like we may have a little leak. We found where the fuel leak is. It's on the rail. You can't see it from out here. It's where the hard line goes straight into the filter. And I'm gonna have to change that out. I'm probably gonna have to cut the hard line further back and then somewhere back here and then put a flexible line. I don't think the hard line is finding exactly where it needs to be centered up on the, uh, the AN fitting. So, but it's leaking like one drop a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up. Um, I adjusted the uh, PSI. The uh, pump only runs about two seconds and it shuts down. So I adjusted it so it was at 58 and a half, which is where this is supposed to be. So let's go ahead and try this. All right, let's move some stuff out of the way. What's going to happen is I'm going to push down on this clutch. And that button is going to go, it's going to start flashing, which means it's energized to start. Takes a little bit of pressure, so I got to push backwards. There it goes. Let's see what happens. It's alive! It's alive!
This was a really exciting episode for me. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit about how to measure for your own backspacing. We did choose our, our wheel, which is the Budnick G10, and I'll show a picture of that. I think it'll look really cool. It's in a basalt color, which is actually a dark gray, which should be darker than the car itself. So um, the Holly fuel injection on this worked uh, really well, that sniper system. Um, I was able to uh, cut out that section of hose, stop the fuel leak, um, so it works really well. Um, next episode, you may see me and the wife do a little bit of upholstery, and I'll explain why in the next video. Um, besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you on another episode of Torqued.